it's a new video, so a new chapter. Wait, it would be a new chapter, so it's a new video. Well, it's a new video, and this is Just Enough Physics, Chapter 5. So, um, we've done a lot of physics so far, basically uh, kinematics, how you describe motion, and then forces, and then what do those forces do? In the last chapter, in Chapter 4, we looked at what I call calculated forces. These are forces that you can write down an equation for, okay? In this chapter, we're going to be looking at forces of constraint. So this is something that you're not going to find a lot of textbooks talking about, but it is important, to, I think, to distinguish between different kinds of forces. So how about a quick review? Okay. See this? It fell. I'm going to drop it again. Okay, so why does that fall? Gravity. Okay, so let's, here is our first uh, equation, calculated equation, the gravitational force near the surface of the Earth, uh, mg. Uh, but if you want to get, if you want to get crazy, and you should, then we have this form. This is the, the better form of gravity that deals with uh, moving away from the center of the Earth. So this is uh, the 1 over r squared gravity, and that's what I covered in the last chapter. Okay, so those are gravity. I'm going to see if we can keep all these out here. Gravity, right there. Next, we have this. We haven't really talked about this one. This is the Coulomb force. This is the, It looks very similar to the gravitational force. This is an interaction between objects that have the electric charge. Uh, I can demonstrate this for you. So here's a, a... This is a styrofoam plate and a PVC pipe. And you rub it. And it doesn't always work because it's wet here. Let's see. And now I bring it near this. And nothing happened. There it did. Okay, it attracted. Whew. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the Coulomb force. Um, we haven't really talked about it a lot. You'll talk about it in the next, in your next semester. Uh, this is just a constant. That's good. Okay, next one. I have another prop. I brought a bunch of props because it's fun. There's a, a nut. The magnetic force. Okay, I didn't write down an equation for the magnetic force because uh, this and this is not super trivial to calculate, so I'll just put stuff. Okay. These are uh, gravity, the electric force, the magnetic force are three of the fundamental forces. We, we explain a lot of things in terms of this. But it turns out that although really everything is one of these three that you see in your real life, uh, when objects fall, it's gravity. When objects interact with each other, or they hold together, or we have chemical interactions, it's usually the, the Coulomb force. Uh, motors and stuff use electric force too. Okay, so that's that's your fundamental forces, but you can't really describe everything really easily that way. So let's look at some other forces. And I only have two here calculated. I can't remember which other ones we have, but let's look at uh, this one. We I did this twice. This is the force due to a spring, and it turns out that the more you stretch it, the greater the force, and we can actually calculate that force uh, with the following model. That's the Hooke's Law spring force. Uh, and, and remember, this is really a Coulomb force because the atoms in the spring are interacting with each other through an electric interaction. So, But we don't want to do that because it's too many particles. And then I don't think I did a problem with this, but I, I will soon. If I have a particle uh, moving through the air, Let's say it's this Lego piece, and it's moving really fast, and it collides with the air. I can actually model that force pushing back on it, depending on the velocity of the object and some other parameters. So these are all our calculated forces. Okay, but now what about something like this? See that? A string. So the tension in a string is actually not something that you can calculate. So here's my first force of constraint. I should write that up here. With an S. So what this string does is it exerts a force. Imagine it's a perfectly uh, perfect string. It exerts a force that prevents this mass from getting further away. So it, it says no stretching, even though it does stretch just a little bit. 
Okay, but that's our general tension force. It says it's gonna pull with a force, whatever it needs to be, to keep the string from breaking. Of course, if you pull it too hard, it actually does break. Okay, here's another one. And if you could look at this from the side, I'll, <coughs> I'll draw this picture. And this one we're gonna talk about today. Here's a, a block on a table. Let me turn that off. It's kind of cold. Uh, so here I have the gravitational force pulling down and then something has to push up to prevent it from falling and that's the normal force. It's an interaction between the block and the table and it's normal, which means perpendicular. It's perpendicular to the surface. And that's a really important force. But again, it's actually an electric force because it's uh, the electric interactions between two atoms and two surfaces. That's the wait. That's the normal force. Uh, and then there's one other one that's actually quite complicated if you think about it, and that's the frictional force. As I move this thing along, and this is all over our lives, right? We have friction everywhere, and it's going to be difficult to deal with, so we're going to have to take care of that. But today... Let's do this. So it's important to realize the following. I have this as the momentum principle. I can write it two ways. Change in momentum over change in time or mass times acceleration. So if I have calculated forces, if I can calculate that, then I can determine the acceleration. So that's step one. Find F, no, it should be calculate F, calculate F, and then find A. So if I find, if I calculate the forces, I can find the acceleration. Now, the other way is in some situations, like with this Lego brick, it's actually two bricks, uh, sitting on the table, well, I know the acceleration. So in this case, I know A. And I can use that to find F net. This is F net. So there's two ways to approach this. Calculate this, find the acceleration, or know the acceleration and find the forces. That's what we have to do in situations where we have forces of constraint. Okay, because I cannot calculate, there's no equation for the normal force. Okay, so let's consider why the normal force is so difficult to deal with. And let's go back to this block right here. Okay, so here I have a block. I'm going to give some numbers here too. Here's my table. And the table's on the floor. And then here's my block. And let's say it has a mass of one kilogram. So it's like a, a book. And so I know that there is a, uh, a gravitational force pulling down because it's on the surface of the Earth. But I also know the acceleration is zero. So if the acceleration is zero, then F net has to be the zero vector. And remember the zero vector, you can't say F net is zero because zero is a scalar and F net is a vector. So this is the vector zero, zero, zero newtons. I know no one likes to talk about that, but that's true. So if F net has to be equal zero, and I have, already I have mg, then I have to have something else pushing up, and that's the normal force, so I'd say plus n equals zero vector. See, I almost forgot. So the sum of these two forces has to be zero. And you may say, well, but gravity's down, it's negative. No, remember, g is the vector. Zero, negative 9.8, zero newtons per kilogram. Um, it has a negative y component. We don't say it's a negative vector. Okay, that's just a little small thing there. Okay, so let's deal with this in the y direction because that's what you want to do. Let me move my paper a little bit. So I can say f net y equals n minus mg equals zero. And let's just use uh, the magnitude of g is around 10 newtons per kilogram, just to make it easy. So that means I have N minus one kilogram times 10 newtons per kilogram equals zero. So N equals 10 newtons. Okay, and you're thinking, well, that was a really boring problem because you just did the obvious. I did, you're right, I did the obvious. 
Okay, now let's change a problem. So now let's say I take my finger and I push. down with a force of 10 newtons. Let's call that F finger. So F finger, zero, negative 10, zero newtons. Now what's true? Well, it's still at rest. It's still the acceleration zero, but now I have in the Y direction, I have this, I have N, minus mg minus 10 equals zero. So if I do the same math, I get n equals 20 newtons. That's the magnitude. Okay, what would happen if that normal force didn't change if it was still 10? If that was 10 up and 20 down, then the net force would be down and the block would accelerate down. But the table's in the way, so it doesn't do that, okay? What would happen if I stop pushing on the block, but it's still, the normal force is still 20 newtons? In that case, the total force would be up and it'd accelerate up. Neither of those things happen, okay? So this table, when I put the block on here and push it down, the table knows exactly the right amount to push on the block so that it neither accelerates up or goes through the table. I move my hand under the table, you can't see that, okay? So that's how we deal with the normal force. Um, it is indeed a weird thing, but if you think about it, it's not so bad. Um, what's happening is if, as you push on this, the table actually bends down a little bit, and so the table's actually a spring, okay? You can actually measure this. If you push on a, on a thin table really hard, you can measure the deflection of the table, and that's how it knows. It's not smart, right? It doesn't calculate how much it has to push up. It just bends so that it pushes up the right amount. Um, but nonetheless, the normal force is our first force of constraint. There is no equation for it, okay? And it's not always up. And it's not always the gravitational force. Those are the two common things I see. N not up, always. N not always equal to mg. Okay, those are the mistakes that people make, and that's not always true. And I'll show you some examples of that, but I'm going to go over uh, the tension and the friction force, and then we'll do some examples. Uh, it's going to be super great. Okay, that's the normal force. Uh, so like this stuff if you like it. Remember, I'm, I'm trying to work through... Uh, my whole introductory physics course. I'm on the first semester doing mechanics on chapter five. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to do this. We're going to do work energy. We're going to do angular momentum. It's going to be great. I'll see you guys in the next episode.